It's a beautiful day outside. The birds are singing, the flowers are blooming, and the vortex signaling the end of the world looms behind us. Ah, what a great time to be alive. And if you are alive, you're probably wondering, how can I maximize my characters in Mistova? Well, you've come to the right place. Hello everyone, and welcome to Fableheim today. As Sanctum Expedition takes a break in town, we're going to go over how to maximize your characters in Mistover. Because there's a lot of death, as you can tell by this lovely grim dark scenery. So, going to the Expedition Center, we can see my crew. Most of them are level 5, except for Dara. Yeah, he'll get there. But you can see they have some very powerful weaponries. And on the right side, a few of their skills say 1, some of them say 2. Some of them say three. How is that significant? Well, let's just say the level three sting hard puts in way more work than the level one sting hard. But first things first, if you're up for farming, which is a time-honored tradition here in the JRPG realm of games, go to the pier and take a look at the available items in your zones. Now, sometimes these will be epic, sometimes not, but this means that the golden chests in that zone will reward these items guaranteed. And you can see the monster level 1 to 2. So if you come through here with all level 3s, the Doomsday Clock is probably going to be a little mad at you. So you kind of have these small opportunities, these small windows to go and farm items before you've over leveled them. And the Doomsday Clock yells at you a lot before you have to move on with your life. And I've kind of reached that point where I'm level 5. I have the hostile guardian's home, so I'm about to fight a boss. Yay. And you can see his monster level is 3 to 4, so I need to hurry up and get onto the next zone before the Doomsday Clock just ticks all the way to midnight because, well, I'm fighting weak evil. But always keep an eye on the items available. Could be a good time to go back and farm. But to increase the power of singular items, we go to the Alchemy Workshop with Katarina and Stefan, who can evaluate and fuse equipment. When it comes to evaluating, when you find blue or purple items, they have additional stats that you can't see yet. Blue items will have a one additional stat, and purple items will have two additional stats. And you can use Mist of the Forest to evaluate these and see what you got. So say on the stress, but we get Stefan. We got additional weak and resistance. Now I didn't really need to do that, so it's a waste of the Mist of the Forest, because Lorelei is rocking... Where is it? The Forest Witchy Dress 2 Epic Version, which means that not only does it have the base stats available to it, but it has 2 speed and 6 stun. All things considered, not the best. But, hey, additional stats are additional stats. And if you wanted to fuse it, you can see on the left-hand side the various uh, upgrades. It's not saying that you'll get 11 HP, 3 evade, and 1 guard. That would make it really good. But you have a chance to get one of these. And you'll see two additional stats that don't have anything next to them, speed and stun. That means if you do find a blue item that has speed and stun on it, which we currently don't have in our possession, then you will additionally have a chance to get the speed or stun upgrade. So personally, I don't like evaluating these items. It's kind of just a waste of the mist if you plan on just fusing it into something else. So for one forest essence we can attempt to get, let's try something like this. For Shadow Hood, we can try for one of these three upgrades. Personally, I would like either the evade or HP. So, of course, Iron Jesus is going to... Okay, he actually gave me the health. <laughs> I thought he was going to give me the guard. So, plus 11 health on this armor. Very good for the Glass Cannony Witch. And it's important to keep this in mind. Because weapons also get much stronger. So, here, for example, Akasha. Same principle. If we go here, we want to apply something to it. With the Scythe, we have a chance of getting one at plus one to one attack, plus one hit, plus one crit. What will Iron Jesus bestow upon us today? More attack. Excellent. Man, you guys are good luck. Holy crap. Now this was just for increasing the potency of items. To increase the power of your expedition members, you have to go to the training camp and train battle skills. Hello, Adele. Nice to see you too. Every time that your character levels, not only do you get additional stats, but you will get one skill point. With this skill point, you can either learn new abilities, in which case you have to recruit someone who already knows that ability and then sacrifice them to learn the new ability, because we're all about appeasing the Dark Gods or something. 
or you can increase the potency of a skill you already know. Level 3 is the highest. Just kidding. Oh, I didn't even know this. Oh my goodness. But as you can see, <laughs> whenever you increase a skill's level, it increases, well, all of the blue text basically. So every ability will get its base hit and crit increased, but then there's a percentage within the ability that um, depends on the ability. So for Sting Hard, it will be uh, increase your damage from 240% of your attack to 260% of your attack, and you'll get a 32% collect power buff, which is something that for the Shadow Blade is pretty good when you compare it, not compare, but use it with realized power, realized. Release power, which deals additional damage based on accumulated power buffs. So this is very important. The only thing is that this can be incredibly expensive. Each rank of skill increases some amount of gold, so from 1 to 2 is 500. Well, to just learn the ability in general is 250. 1 to 2 is 500. 2 to 3 is 750. 3 to 4 is 1,000 gold. I actually wonder what 4 to 5 is. You know what? Let's see. I use Sting Hard a lot. 4 to 5 is 2,000. You can see how this can get expensive very quickly. I'm actually quite curious. Our Metal Corrosion is at rank 3. Oh, that's mad. As you can see for the Grim Reaper, the Grim Reaper specializes at debuffs. So what you're seeing is kind of the increased potency of a debuff. The base attack will go from 180% to 195%. The debuff itself will go from 30% defense decrease to 32% defense decrease. And the chance will go from 100% to 110%. That is nuts. By the way, these curses, they start at 80% chance to inflict the debuff. So upgrading them is pretty good. You do have to kind of pick and choose which ones you want to upgrade because you can't. You have a limited amount of skill points pretty sure. And gold is, again, kind of a scarce resource. But dang, this is even better than I thought it was. While you're at the training camp, it's also important to remember to keep an eye on your jinxes. I'm not going to say this is going to either make or break your character, but some of these jinxes are absolutely horrifying. For example, with Lorelai, she has missed contamination. This, there, this means that there's a 50% chance that your attack will decrease by 10% for three turns, and you continuously bleed. This is awful. I would recommend getting rid of this the very moment that you see that you got it. Now, the way you get rid of it is you randomize it into another Jinx, so there's no way of knowing whether it's going to be a good or bad Jinx for you. But we got Elusive if crew in front. When fullness is at 50% or above, your chance to escape increases by 15%, when someone is in front of you. Now, I have never escaped from a battle because I am an honorable expedition leader. But if you wanted to flee like a craven dog, you could. And see for Dura, this is a new one that we got. This slow and hungry, the reason it looks different is because this is from a cursed item. So you can't really do anything about that. I'm pretty sure. Huh. We're not going to, though. Actually, you know what? When luminosity is at 50% or above, your hit decreases by 10% when evading an opponent's attack. We're going to get rid of this because your luminosity is very frequently above 50% because you're touching those glow flowers all the time. Your quit always decreases by 10% when exploring the Misty Forest. Annoying, but not awful. If that was like hit or something, I'd get rid of that in a moment. Just in the blink of an eye. I think that's all of the ones that I really need to get rid of. Actually, what's this? When fullness is at 40% or low, your guard decreases by 10% when hit by an opponent's attack. Meh. We can keep that. Purified Mist is a scarce resource, and each retrain is 1,000 gold, so keep that in mind. Always only get rid of the jinxes that will really screw you over. The moment I finished recording this episode, a new patch was announced for Mistover. Patch 1.0.3c. The TLDR, everything is cheaper. Life is grand. So in the description, I will put a link to the patch notes. So you can go check out the fancy charts they made for yourself. Back to the video. And last but not least, the way to increase... This isn't a direct offensive increase, but the support lab does very many good things for you. Hello, Olivia, my fellow bespectacled adventurer. As you can see, this is mostly quality of life stuff, but increasing your fullness, your luminosity, your inventory is very helpful. 
The ability to recruit more core crew members by increasing the capacity allows you to recruit more people to hold on to, to later train your more powerful people, or to even start like a second level group um, that you pair together to do lower level dungeons without suffering the doomsday penalty. There's a lot you can do with a larger crew. Now this is one I've been waiting for for a while. When you go to recruit someone, this increases the amount of people that can be there, and some of them will be up to level 4. Now which each with each rank, someone's recruitment becomes more, becomes more expensive, but it may allow you to learn even more abilities, which I am always a fan of. Thank you, Olivia. Was there anything else I needed? Yes. Increases storage space. I don't need to tell you why that's amazing. And that was all that we had. Increase experience and increase gold. Just recall quality of life things that increase the uh, ability for you to run more groups and stuff. For example, Dura, our lovely werewolf, is here because Lawrence passed away due to my inability to remove bleeds, basically. So Dara being two levels below everyone is because he's trying to catch up. That is everything I could think of to increase the potency and effectiveness of your expedition. So thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed and that you learned something. If you did, be sure to like the video, subscribe, hit that stupid bell so YouTube knows to notify you because there'll be more Missed Over content coming very soon. If you have questions, comments, or something else that you would like to see, let me know. Bye-bye.